Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from the wonderful Oklahoma City Museum of Art. It's in the heart of our capital city, and it is a must-visit location. The museum offers a dynamic range of exhibits from prestigious museums and collections throughout the world. It's also home to one of the world's largest public collections of Dale Chihuly glass. We'll show you around throughout the show. But to get things started, we're going to take a look at a new permanent exhibit at a museum not that far from here. The Oklahoma History Museum is now home to Oklahoma Oklahomans in space. Quinn Tran gives us a look around. The Oklahoma History Center celebrates its 15th anniversary with the opening of this new exhibit, Launched to Landing, Oklahomans and Space. Just in every facet, astronauts, scientists, engineers, mission control. Dan Provo is the director of the Oklahoma History Center. This is not an exhibit that talks a lot about technology, although technology is featured. It's an exhibit about people and about the importance of those people doing extraordinary things. The people include a dozen astronauts, men and women who reflect Oklahoma's pioneer spirit, people like Eileen Collins. She became the very first pilot, female pilot on the shuttle, and then she became the first female commander. Bill Moore is a space historian and author who contributed to the writing of these panels. He says this exhibit is significant. It showcases unique photos, rare items, and artifacts. What's unique about Oklahomans in the space program is that we've had an astronaut in every phase of our space program from Oklahoma. As you walk in, the first astronaut you see is Gordon Cooper, who was our first Oklahoma astronaut in the Mercury program. You'll also see a mission control uh, display console, and a lot of our engineers worked in mission control, which is really another amazing story. How it impresses the youth of Oklahoma to see that they can achieve great things because these astronauts, they didn't come from the big cities. Tom Stafford's from Weatherford, Owen Garriott's from Enid, John Harrington from Wetumpka, on and on, they're all small towns. So it really impresses the kids. They, they, you can see them light up thinking, wow, they came from a town like mine. The centerpiece of this exhibit is this huge spacecraft that launched back in 1973. The Skylab Command Module weighs 11,500 pounds and carries a lot of history. Holds the record for the longest duration at a single mission of an American spacecraft in space at 84 days. Those days in space and the missions and the years that followed benefit all of us today. The first laptop computer ever developed and used was used on the space shuttle. Wireless mice for your computer, cordless tools, battery technology, scratch resistant eyeglass lenses, all these are things that were derivative of the space program. And it starts with a lot of the people that you see in this room and the connection again to Oklahoma. The Oklahoma History Center spent years planning with the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum to make this happen. Perhaps this will inspire young people to reach for the stars. For many of us, it's the closest we'll ever get to space exploration. At the Oklahoma History Center, Quinn Tran, Discover Oklahoma. You can see the Oklahomans in Space exhibit with a general admission ticket to the Oklahoma History Center. Hit up their website for details on that. And after you've soaked up just a little bit of knowledge, you might be ready to soak up a little sun. And if you can't head out of town with your rod and reel, that's okay. You can experience some fishing in many of Oklahoma's larger cities. Deanne Stein shows us how. The wildlife flock to area ponds and lakes across Oklahoma where the fish are ready to bite. Fishing is year-round in Oklahoma. There's nothing better than fishing in the great outdoors, but believe it or not, this serene setting is just minutes from downtown Oklahoma City. Urban fishing is gonna be anything, any body of water that falls within a metro area. And that means thousands of areas, including city parks and even neighborhood ponds. But through the Department of Wildlife and Conservation's Close to Home program, around 30 of these areas are stocked with fish, including hybrid sunfish, channel catfish, and at two locations, trout. We stock these fish at like six to eight inches. They'll get all the way up to 12, 13 inches. Um, and you know, that's a fish about the size of a, close to a frying pan. Um, 
Skylar St. Eves is the fishing coordinator with the department and met my daughter and me at Delisi Youth Park to show that even a couple of city girls like us can fish. This button right here, this engages the reel. For the cast and retrieve method. Wow, that was good. But for some anglers, they like the sit and wait approach. Uh, I, I would recommend for most anglers going the bottom fishing power bait. Let the fish come to you. Okay, it's my turn. Because you have your three fingers down here and your thumb, and that goes across like that. I finally got the hang of it. I'm probably making this look very awkward. I think. It just takes practice. Anytime that somebody goes fishing for the first time, you know, our, my mission is that it becomes a lifelong hobby. With an urban fishing area like this, his task is even easier to do. Not everybody has the time on the weekends or the means to travel long distances to go to a major reservoir, things like that. So if you're fishing once a week or once a month at your local neighborhood pond, you're an urban angler. Like nine-year-old Garen Sexton. I like that it's a fun waiting game. It's usually fun to watch like the bobber, your pole. It gets exciting when you catch your first fish. We have uh, three small kids, so they're conveniently located. Um, they have good fish that they can catch at a young age. Um, you know, it's easy for them to throw their line out and catch fish almost every time that we come. And you don't need much equipment to be successful. I typically only take two to three different types of lures with me when I go. Um, and then the same thing with trout. I only take a couple little boxes that'll either fit into my pocket or fit into a little bag. So with a state fishing license and a little bit of gear, you're on your way to becoming an urban angler. Discovering Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, I'm Deanne Stein. You can find out more about fishing in Oklahoma by checking out the Oklahoma Fishing Trail. You can download a guide on TravelOK.com or click up top where it says request free brochures to have one mailed to you. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. We just wanted a place where everybody could come in, feel like family, and find whatever they needed. A sweet shop in an Oklahoma small town Why you need to plan a trip to Chickasha. It's a really unique experience. I'm really interactive, and so um, a lot of people have fun with it. And sit down to a different kind of dinner in Stillwater. Stickers for your water bottle, for your computer, for your car. Plus, you name it, they make it. Wait until you see where you can buy it coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Imagine limitless possibilities with the Oklahoma Travel Guide. Imagine world-class wonderlands, road trips that inspire. Imagine date night elevated. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com. Imagine that. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, home to beautiful exhibits as well as the Noble Theater, offering the chance to view many different types of films. You can certainly soak up the heart of the city in a place like this. Absolutely, and we hope that you'll also plan a trip to some of Oklahoma's small towns. So here's an idea. How about a trip to the Oki Mountain Trading Company in Chickasha? The first thing you notice when walking into the Oki Mountain Trading Company is how nice it smells. It's because of their Bridgewater candle line. We burn a different scent every day, and every time a jar of candle is sold, the company donates three meals to um, feed the children. So, to help orphan children across the seas and in the U.S. The second thing you will notice is just how big their store is, and then there is the extensive inventory. And we just knew that we wanted a place that uh, anybody could come in and grab a gift for, you know, a baby shower or a coworker or a birthday gift for your husband. And men's gifts are so hard to find, so we, you know, really focused on that area too to make it easier for the ladies to buy for their husbands. And, and so we just wanted a place where everybody could come in, feel like family, and find whatever they needed. Let's go back to what Crystal said a moment ago. Men's gifts generally are difficult to find. Well, not here they aren't. The women start out buying it for their, their husbands or boyfriends or, or fathers, and then now they start coming in on their own, knowing that they have a place to shop and get their own products. Now, may I point out one other thing that one doesn't normally see in a store such as this, and that's different kinds of soda and candy. We, we knew from the beginning that we wanted a section in the store, a little mini candy shop, so you can bring your kids in or, or yourself. We have people that love our chocolate milk balls, and they will come every week to get their, 
their bag of candy and just to fill up their own bag of candy and we weigh it and just like the, the old time candy stores. Oki Mountain does have a variety of items with one of their most popular being the kitchen and home decor section. People love kitchen gadgets and anything kitchen and people love cooking and, and gifting it too. And so that's probably maybe our top seller, kitchen and home decor. And then our men's gifts do really good. Um, because women don't have to go out of town anymore to you know, find something. Our baby, um, lots of people need baby gifts. By the way, they do free gift wrapping here. We do offer bridal and baby registries and we try to make it super easy and simple. Made in Oklahoma products can be found throughout the store too, from the Duncan-based Teleferro Soapworks to... And then there is a young lady in Sulphur, Oklahoma that makes beaded bracelets. And Mix Mercantile is her company name and she calls her bracelets Sugar Stacks. And so those have been a big hit too. Then there are products from Ben Jack Laredo with pickled asparagus and chili. Honestly, Margo is a company started by a young lady who is now a student at OU. She designs aromatherapy, sprays, bath salts, lip glosses, and more. Oki Mountain Trading Company, they'll get you fixed up. Oki Mountain Trading Company is located inside the Chickasha Mall. They're open Monday through Saturday at 10 a.m., closed on Sundays. After a little shopping in one small town, how about a bite to eat in another? Photojournalist Casey Kennedy takes us to Tokyo Pot in Stillwater. We are here for my sister's birthday, and ever done anything like this before. Yeah, you're done? Done? We're in downtown Stillwater on 10th Street. We are a shabu shabu restaurant. So um, we bring out raw um, meat and vegetables and you cook it yourself at your table in um, pots of boiling broth. Yeah, that's one take a little bit longer. That's okay. one you look at, you know, like a, that's one is a sushi gray. You can cook uh -huh. it in a little bit longer. We are reservation only. Shabu shabu is Japanese for swish swish. So that's why it's called that, because you know you're swishing the, the food around in the broth to cook it. We have um, beef, chicken, seafood. We have lots of different kinds of veggies and noodles. Everyone seems to love it. Um, people are very enthusiastic about it, especially because it's so different from other places. It's super tasty. It's a really unique experience, um, really interactive, and so um, a lot of people have fun with it. And um, we are the only Shabu Shabu restaurant in Stillwater and one of the few in Oklahoma. So um, a lot of people drive long distances to come here. You'll find Tokyo Pot at 108 West 10th Street in Stillwater. They serve dinner only, open 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. seven days a week. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. So it's been really fun to see that Tulsa Pride. Tulsa Pride that turns statewide will show you how. I ordered it, I ate it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's one of the best, it's the best sandwich I've ever had, Philly cheesesteak. And the must stop spot on Main Street in Norman. It's all coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity and wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. Welcome back to the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, home to incredible works of art and an impressive gift shop too. The gift shop really is great. We know lots of folks who come here just to pick up a gift or two. And if it's an Oklahoma themed souvenir you're after, we've got a great idea for that too. Right now, Jason Grubb shows us Mythic Press shirts in Tulsa. In one room, colorful spools of threads feed through machines and onto hats, bags, and shirts. In another room, shirts are being screen printed by hand and machine. The crew at Mythic Press cranks out apparel sporting all sorts of Oklahoma and Tulsa pride. Community is really important to our team and our business.
At the warehouse and shop, you'll find dozens of designs for t-shirts, hats, postcards, and stickers. Stickers for your water bottle, for your computer, for your car. And in just as many colors. You know, we probably stock uh, maybe 75 or 100 stock colors, but then we can custom Pantone match and, and mix ink uh, in, in whatever capacity is needed. Owner Cole Cunningham says what started out as a website and marketing agency several years ago has turned into a merchandise and apparel company promoting Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the iconic stops we have around our state. You can shop them at two locations, this one at 3rd and Lewis, and just up the street at Mother Road Market along Route 66. Nearly everything in stock is designed and produced by Mythic Press. Sometimes, you know, the magical idea appears, other times it really is a process. In all cases, it's community driven. Designers pay attention to local events and what's going on around town or the state. Many times that seeds an idea of which our design team will kind of bring to life through illustration and graphic design both. This is one of the big sellers, Mythic's signature design for the recently redesigned Tulsa City flag and it was born on the day the Tulsa flag was released. And it's been our best selling product to kind of put our retail program on the map. Since then, they've done hundreds of other Tulsa themed flag designs. So it's been really fun to see that Tulsa pride. Civic pride is huge in Tulsa and we just try to embrace that with creating products that people want to wear, want to represent their city and their community. Oh, yeah. And it, it's really uh, brought a lot of opportunity to us to, to really connect with that that community as well. While you're browsing around, make sure you look at these t-shirts commemorating the neon signs in Oklahoma. In fact, $5 from each one of these sales benefits the Oklahoma Route 66 Association. Mythic has a similar campaign for Tulsa's Turkey Mountain, a popular site for hiking. And we designed a collection of products, t-shirts, ball caps, stickers, and a few other odds and ends, um, of which all of the apparel sold, we donate $5 uh, towards trail maintenance and improvements. If you're in a rush, Mythic Press even has a few vending machines around town for a quick grab and go. All of them filled with pride for a place we call home. In Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. You can visit Mythic Press shirts inside Tulsa's Mother Road Market or check out their headquarters at 2015 East 3rd Street. You can also shop online at mythic.press. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. On the meatballs, it's my mom's meatball recipe. Our sauce is my, my mom's. Um, our Italian wedding soup is my grandmother's family recipe for years. They are serving up the family recipes in this little spot on Main Street in Norman. We'll take you there when Discover Oklahoma continues. There are some things you just can't contain. Oklahoma Today magazine is bursting with culture. Mind-blowing restaurants, trips, adventures, and so much more. This Christmas, do something unexpected. Give the gift of Oklahoma Today for only $14.95. Oklahoma Today Magazine. Break through the ordinary. We've really enjoyed our time here today at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. We always do, and now that we're about to hit the road, how about getting a bite to eat at one of my favorite places in Norman? Come along with me now to Tino's Italian Eats and Sweets. Growing up in Philly, I've always had, had a passion for Italian food, and this is a kind of staple in the area where we grew up. There's one on every corner. Valentino's talking about a Philly cheesesteak sandwich which was created in the Italian immigrant section of South Philadelphia in the late 1930s. He told me when he moved here 20 years ago searching for a good cheesesteak, it was tough. So he built his own restaurant to truly find one. And today his passion for outstanding food continues. You have to love what you do, you have to care about it, you have to care about your customers and what they want. Um, and we do here. And when it comes to his signature dish, customers are loving it. I love the food here. Um, I feel like I was telling um, Guy that I feel like I've never had a great Philly cheesesteak until I had this. And I ordered it, I ate it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the best sandwich I've ever had Philly cheesesteak. Valentino takes the love, care, and the time to make sure everything is done to perfection. We hand cut our veggies. Um, we have select ribeye that we bring in that is super shaved. Um, and that is actually one of the 
One of the trade secrets is the meat. Um, you have to get it a certain way. And then as far as cheese goes, because we are in middle America, I'm not limited to whiz or sliced cheese. We kind of do it all. And Tino is the master multitasker of doing it all. He's a second generation spatula specialist wielding those blades skillfully and quickly. My favorite thing to prepare would probably be about 12 Philly cheesesteaks at once. Because I get to put a huge pile of meat on the grill and I like seeing it steam and cook and get the veggies mixed in and cheese melted down on it. I think it is phenomenal. You get the taste of Philly without having to buy a plane ticket. And it's just, I've never had anything bad here. Other menu items are extremely popular with customers too. Their soft pretzels, for example, are very tasty and I love eating pretzels the size of hubcaps. Their hoagies are delicious too, many of which come from family recipes. Honestly, everything I sampled here off their extensive menu was flavorful and very enjoyable. On the meatballs, it's my mom's meatball recipe. Our sauce is my, my mom's. Um, our Italian wedding soup is my grandmother's family recipe for years. Tino's is the kind of place where you have to leave room for dessert. They do have wonderful cannolis, cheesecake, and more, but my personal favorite is the Italian ice. It is incredible, and it's a big hit with customers. People are kind of mesmerized by it. They're like, is this ice cream? What, you know, really, what is this? And of course, back east, it's water ice. Oh man, the food is so amazing that you have to come and try it and you'll be hooked like I am. The reason people want to come to Tino's is our passion for what we do, um, our quality, our care that goes into everything. Tino's Italian Eats and Sweets is located at 209 West Main in Norman. They are open for lunch from 11 to 2 and dinner from 5 to 8, Monday through Friday, open all day Saturday 11 to 8 and closed on Sunday. A big thank you to our host this week, the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. They are observing guidelines when it comes to COVID-19, so you don't have to worry about safety. The museum is open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday noon to 5. They do limit numbers of visitors during the pandemic, but you can easily purchase tickets online. Visit their website for all the details. Coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're checking out some good bones at the Museum of Osteology. And we take a trip to my hometown of Lawton for a little German food. It's all coming up next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.